70 years after doctors told this woman that her baby died, she received a life-changing phone call. Humans are social animals. Having contact with others is one of the most precious things in our lives. And there is no relationship like the one between a mother and her child. The worst thing that can happen to a mother is losing her child. But what if the mother has spent her whole life assuming that her child died at birth, when it turns out that this is not true at all? This bizarre story is a real one. At the age of 88, the American Genevieve Purinton discovered that the truth was not what she thought it was all her life. Did the doctors not tell her the truth 70 years ago? Keep watching to hear the answer. Steve First, I'll tell you the story of baby Steve. He too lost contact with his mother just after he was born. You won't believe it. They found him at London's Gatwick Airport. Not an everyday place to find a lonely baby, is it? But this is precisely what happened. April 10th, 1986. It was a busy afternoon at London Airport. Passengers with a lot of luggage arrived and departed to all corners of the world. On a cold floor in the ladies' toilet, there is a small baby of about 10 days old. He wears a striped shirt and had a blue and white checkered blanket around him. He appeared to be well and healthy and was in deep sleep when sales assistant Beryl Wright found him. She was about to wash her hands and thought some old clothes were lying on a small pile. But when she heard snoring, she put the blanket aside. She didn't believe her eyes. A baby was asleep. At first, Beryl thought the baby's mother was in one of the toilets. She thought that the mother had forgotten her baby. She decided to stay with the baby and hugged him. Minutes passed and several ladies came out of the toilets, but nobody came to pick up the baby. Beryl realized that the mother would not come back. The baby was left behind, all alone. 25 years later and 48 kilometers south of Gatwick lives the sympathetic and modest Steve Hines. He lives there with his wife Sammy and a three-year-old daughter, Alana. Steve is very proud of his family. But now that he is older himself, he wants to know where he comes from. He wants his daughter to know where her grandparents are. His adoptive parents support him in the search. So Steve Hydes, aka Gary Gatwick, decides to look for his mother to find out what exactly happened after the birth. The only thing Steve knows about that time is that Beryl found him in the ladies' toilet. Eventually, however, he succeeds in finding Beryl and the other airport workers who took care of him after he was born, and he met them all at Gatwick Airport. They immediately felt like family to him. It was amazing to see how important Steve still was to them after all these years. Steve gets help from the police in a search. They take the matter very seriously. With the help of DNA traces, the police hope to find out who the woman was who left him on that cold floor in the ladies' toilet at Gatwick Airport. Until then, Steve remains hopeful. He wants his mother to know that he is not angry with her and that she doesn't have to be afraid when he finally meets her. For now, Steve only has the stories of Barry and the other employees at the airport. Steve is happy with his own family. Who knows, maybe one day he will find out who his real mother is. Moses this story also shows that not all babies end up immediately with their biological parents. British father Richard Cushworth and his wife Mercedes had a different baby in their hands one day after the birth of their son Moses. Mrs. Cushworth gave birth to her son Moses in El Salvador in May 2015. He, like many other babies there, spent his first night in a hospital nursery. But the next day, without knowing it, the mother took another baby home with her. Mother Mercedes knew straight away this was not the baby she had seen the night before. Moses looked a lot like his father, unlike this baby. Mercedes shared her doubts with the nurses in the hospital. They indicated that she was probably still confused from the medication that they had given her during the birth and that this child was her son. Eventually, the parents believed the nurses and took the baby home with them. In the following days, the baby developed more and more external features 
that the parents did not recognize. Nevertheless, the mother loved the child deeply, but somewhere in her heart, she had serious doubts. Days passed, and Mercedes began to have increasing doubts. She talked to her husband about it. In the end, they decided to do a DNA test to be sure that this was their son. Moments later, Mercedes' doubts turned out to be well-founded. The DNA test showed that there was a 0.0% .0 chance that this was their child. The parents felt guilty, and at the same time, they were worried about their son Moses. Where was he? What had happened to him? Would they never see him again? They panicked more and more. On the same day that the DNA test for baby Moses took place, other babies born on the same day in the same hospital were also tested. This shows that two babies got mixed up after birth. Within a few hours, the parents had to hand over the baby that was not theirs, but they also received good news because Moses was found. Everything happened very quickly. They hardly had time to say goodbye to the baby they had taken care of all those months. Saying goodbye caused intense sadness, but when they finally got Moses in their arms, there was only joy. Moses also seemed to feel right at home. All they want now is justice and to know what happened. Genevieve Purinton At the age of 88, Genevieve Purinton lived a rather lonely life in a nursing home in Florida. All her family members had unfortunately already died, and she believed that the only child she had given birth to nearly 70 years ago had died shortly after giving birth. But one day she received a letter at home that would at last help her to discover the truth. As a teenager, Genevieve became pregnant with a married man. She was single and had yet to graduate from high school. At the time, it was not allowed to have an illegitimate child. Genevieve was only 18 years old when she gave birth to her daughter in 1949, but she never got to hold her baby in her arms. Nurses in the hospital told her that her baby had passed away after birth. Genevieve had no reason to doubt what she was told. She accepted that she lost her child and tried to get her life back on track. But Genevieve felt something was missing in her life. Her mother had warned her that her father would be furious when she returned home, so she went to live with the grandmother, finished high school, and started a new life in Florida. Now, many years later, Genevieve spends her days in a nursing home. Days pass without much happening, until September 2018, when she receives the phone number of a woman named Connie Moltrup. Are you curious how this story continues? Give us a thumbs up, and by the way, have you already subscribed to our channel with the bell turned on? If you do that, you'll stay up to date with all our videos. Now, on to the story of Genevieve Purinton and Connie Moltrop. Connie grew up in California after a nice family adopted her as a baby. She was always aware that her parents were not her biological parents. Nevertheless, she felt very much at home in her adoptive family and thought it was amazing that her adoptive parents had chosen her. Despite the love in the family as a young girl, Connie sometimes fantasized about her biological mother. Who would she be? What would she look like? Would they look alike? Connie's adoptive parents became seriously ill at one point and both died when Connie was only five years old. Connie herself had one daughter, Chase, and she became the grandmother of two grandchildren. Connie was under the assumption that these were her three only blood relatives. But everything changed when her daughter Chase came home one day with a DNA test. She thought her mother would want to know more about her genes. Chase also bought a DNA test for herself. She didn't expect those tests to change her mother's life forever. One day during a family birthday, Connie told her that her biological mother's name was Genevieve Purinton. She had never seen her nephew's reaction coming. He said Genevieve was his aunt. So he knew this lady that Connie was talking about. Connie could not believe it. It turned out that she was the baby the nurses had said died when in fact the nurses took her away for adoption. The nurses did this at the time to protect Genevieve 
Society would not have accepted that as an unmarried woman. She would have a child from a married man at such a young age. It was awful, of course, that Genevieve did not know about this. She thought her baby had died. On the 8th of September 2018, what Connie had been waiting for most of her life happened. She received a phone call from her mother. I think I'm your mother. You could hear a pin drop. For the first time in her life, Connie listened to the voice of her birth mother. Connie's mother wanted to know if she remembered her original name, Margaret Ann Mitch. It was a day that both ladies never forgot. The first meeting took place in the nursing home where Genevieve lived. Connie went there to visit, and she immediately recognized her mother. Both ladies immediately started laughing. Connie knew for sure that this woman was her biological mother, and she immediately saw a lot of similarities. Also, her mother was the only one walking around with a walker, and Connie knew that. It was a special meeting that both of them will remember forever. Since then, mother and daughter meet regularly. They try to spend as much time together as possible to make up for lost time. Connie often visits her mother in the nursing home. Then they talk about how much they look alike and laugh a lot. <laughs>